I suppose I had never seen a happier room. And there, in the corner, was the nicest little hearth you could ever hope for. Christmas is sort of special for everybody. And we have a very special show that I sincerely believe will heighten your Christmas. Now, as you all know, Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol is one of the most famous pieces in literature. But very few people know that Dickens wrote another beautiful rendering of Christmas called Cricket on the Heart. Matter of fact, I just found out about it myself. You never heard of the lucky cricket on the hearth? Well, it all started in merry old England a long time ago. Uh, here, lend an ear. One Christmas morning you may look into your stocking and find that something shocking has occurred. Among the candy canes and toys, you'll hear a funny little noise. You've got yourself a cricket on the heart. Cricket on the heart, take that horseshoe off your door. With a cricket on the heart, you can leave that rocky penny sitting on the floor. Cricket on the heart. Home at last. Well, Merry Christmas to you. Hmm. I suppose you're all wondering what me, a cricket, is doing here on Christmas Eve with a home of me own. See, I am a part of the family, as it were. Oh, and it's a lucky household what has a cricket on their hearth. And indeed, I am good luck. For if it hadn't been for Cricket Crockett here, why, there wouldn't be no blinking family. I'll tell you how it all began. Long time ago it was. Springtime, if I remember correct. Oh, I was some cracking cricket, I can tell you. Ready to take on the world, I was. I was looking for a proper family to adopt. When all of a sudden I spies about the happiest house I'd ever seen. And a toy shop, too. I'll return in a little while. Here now, here now, you watch it. What? It's a cricket. Here now, you just watch it. I am very fragile. There, there, I mean you no harm. Why, I've heard that you crickets bring good luck with you. How about staying with us for a while? Come on now, just go inside and make yourself at home. Uh, if you've a mind to. Oh, well, uh... Oh, it's... Not a very exciting place, just me and my daughter, and, and of course, the toys. Uh, sir, I'd be delighted. Crockett's the name. Cricket Crockett. I'm Caleb Plummer. We'll work out the arrangements later, after I deliver these toys. Ta-ta. I suppose I had never seen a happier room. And there, in the corner, 
was the nicest little heart you could ever hope for. Perfect. <laughs> Here now, what's this? Oh, Edward, I, I shouldn't. No, no, Bertha. You go right ahead and cry. But I don't want you to remember me like this. All, all teary. Any memory of you would be the most precious a man could carry. But I promised myself that I'd be brave and smile to the very end. <laughs> oh, why must you go away? I must serve out my enlistment. I must go to sea tomorrow. For two years? It's just not fair. Darling. I'm a commissioned officer in the Royal Navy, and... Oh, I hate that commission, and I hate that uniform, and I hate the Royal Navy. Bertha. Oh, no, I don't. Really. I'm sorry. I'll release you from your promise, if you want. Oh, no. Oh, Edward. I, I, I couldn't help myself. See, that, that's the way it is with us crickets. We get involved. My darling, you will be here when I return. Promise. Oh, Edward. I love you so. Don't give your love away. Wait for me, I will come back to you. And we'll have a thousand days of May. Don't give your love I wish I could do more than say Don't give your love away My longest day will be when I remember today And I'll wonder if you'll be there If the years haven't touched to my lips one way Don't give your love away Well, the time passed right quick. Oh, I suppose it always does when you're busy. Ooh, and busy we was. Christmas was getting nearer and nearer. Two tacks, Cricket. Two tacks on their way. More red paint, Crockett, if you please. Hmm. Make it smiling red. Smiling red you want, smiling red you get. Divine. The perfect color for a smile. I suppose I'm being extravagant with the paint. But no child wants a doll who can't smile. Now, now, what's this? Was that a tear that I saw, Bertha? Now, you shouldn't get yourself all unhappy and teary over thinking about your young man. It's been a year and a half since Edward went away, and, and well, sometimes when I think about him, I smile and cry because I'm happy. If a tear falls when you're smiling and you're still gay inside, then it means that you found a happiness your tears can never hide. Smiles go with tears, smiles go with tears. Sometimes when you're happiest, smile. Suddenly appears Even though you try to control yourself You'll never hide the tears Smiles go with tears Smiles go with tears Some 
for the eyes. Brown or black or sky blue pink. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What, uh, what can I do for you? You are a certain Caleb Plummer. I am. Call me Jeremiah Bleak. I am a certain agent of Her Majesty the Queen. Oh? You have a certain Bertha Plummer for a daughter, who in turn was engaged to a certain Edward Belton. You mean, is engaged? I am sorry, but it is my melancholy duty to inform you that a certain Edward Belton, late of Her Majesty's Royal Navy, is lost at sea. Lord have mercy. No! 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 His small, mournful effects will to the girl. Bertha! Bertha, my darling daughter! It's all a mistake, I'm certain. It could be a mistake, couldn't it? Hardly. Oh, no. No, no. My poor baby. My poor baby. Blimey! That's a day I'd soon as not remember. The beginning of all our troubles, for you see, the shock of that awful message delivered the way it was turned poor Bertha blind. Oh, my baby. My poor, poor baby. Oh, grim times was upon us, I'll tell you. Oh, how quick everything changed. Poor dear Bertha, living in her world of darkness. And old Caleb, beside himself with grief. All he did was nurse his daughter, didn't touch the unfinished toys, and Christmas was only a short way off. And when the happy season came, he wasn't ready. He didn't sell one toy that year, made nary a hate Yeah, what money he did have all went to the doctors he brought in, but they could do no good. And Caleb, not thinking, went out and borrowed more and more money. Never having any idea how he was going to pay it back. <laughs> now, one sad day, they could no longer pay the rent, and they were deep in debt. Old Caleb had no choice but to pack up and leave. Oh, they was hard times, I can tell you. Long, hungry days, looking for a bit of work, anything. Ooh, and finally, one day... No use. Can't go one step farther. We have no other choice. No choice, Father? Well, what do you mean? The poor house? Oh, no. You can't give up. What else can I do? Oh, if we ever needed a little bit of luck... Is that what I think it is? A toy factory. Now, I'd wager they could use a fine toy maker like you. Do you think so? Well, let's find out, mate. Let's find out. Cricket, is Father seeing Mr. Tackleton now? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Shh. So you want the situation as a toy maker, do you? Well... Toy makers come thruppence a dozen. Correct, Uriah? <laughs> yes. But I'm a very good worker, sir, and I have my own tools, and, and I'm very good, sir. He's very good, Uriah. <laughs> my friend, Uriah Kaur, thinks that's very funny. I'm sorry. I, I really best be going. No, wait. Caleb Plummer, eh? I, I've heard of your skills. Well, you won't be paid anything, but you can live on the premises and there'll be leftover food for you. Whatever you say, sir. W where are the other toy makers? <laughs> Did you hear that, Uriah Kaur? He wants to know where the other toy makers are. 
There are no other toy makers. <laughs> Is this our new home, Father? What's it like? Well, uh, splendid. Splendid. Quite palatial. And Mr. Tackleton, what's he like, Father? Oh, he's fine. And he's made me head man of his entire factory. Oh, Father, how I wish I could see it all. I'll see everything for you, my dear. And everything I see shall be beautiful. I promise you. Through my eyes You will see the world As it should be Through my eyes Always gay Covering the gray Through my eyes Let me dry your foolish tears Now and forever Take my love and throw away Jarvis, are you not? Yes, my lord. Well, that'll be all, Jarvis. You can have the night off. Thank you, my lord. And it was like we lived in two worlds. What was real for us, and what was real for blind Bertha. Of all the blinkety blooming hearts in all the blinkety blooming world, this hearth is the Blinkiest and the bluminest. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, what's the use? Make do, Cricket Crockett, make do. Blind! Ah! Uh, evening, matey. <laughs> well, we got no place for bugs around here. Hello, hello, who are you calling a bug? I am an insect, I am. I will thank you to address me by my proper rank. Ah! I love to mangle insects. Uriah, Uriah, what are you doing out here? Naughty, naughty birdie, come to bed by now. <laughs> Into your cage, Uriah Kaur. It's late. Oh, 
Nighty night, little friend. Well, it was obvious one of us had to go. Oh, yeah, but I'm getting ahead of my story. It was about a week before Christmas, and poor old Caleb Plummer was working night and day to keep up with the demands of the season, as it were. Plummer, you're using entirely too much paint on the dolls' faces. Just trying to give them nice smiles. Who the blazers cares about smiles? A dot and a half is enough for any doll. Paint costs money. Yes, sir. Oh, but Tackleton Toys was mean and grubby things. Oh, all he cared about was the shillings and pennies they'd bring. But Caleb, oh, he couldn't see them go out into the world like that. So, every night, me and him would sneak in and fix them up proper. Then pop them back in their boxes by morning so Tackleton wouldn't find out. It was just two days before Christmas when we met up with... Him. Oh, excuse me, sir. I had so much on my arms that I couldn't see. No, no, it was my fault, I assure you. Here, allow me to help you pick those up. What is it, sir? My bones ache so terribly. I've no money for a room. Been sleeping out of doors. Why, that's terrible. In this weather. Oh, you must come home with me. I haven't much to offer, but you're quite welcome to share it with me. Bless you, son. Bless you. He was a funny, quiet sort of fella. Wouldn't hardly say boo. Just sat there looking at Bertha with them sad old eyes. We're so glad you could stay with us. Oh. Oh, it is my pleasure indeed. Bertha. <gasps> uh, what is it? Oh, the, the way you said... My name just now is... I'm sorry. Indeed, I am. I was too forward. Miss Plummer, I meant to say. Here now, here now. No serious formalities. For we're all one family, and it's almost Christmas. (laughs) And we're going to have a splendid Christmas this time, aren't we, Father? With mistletoe, and a big tree, and decorations, and, and everything. Promise me, Father. Oh, promise me. Even though I I cannot see them, you will have those things. But of course. Of course. Now, Caleb had been lo- um, stretching the truth for a long time now to keep Bertha happy. But when it came to fibbing about Christmas, well... He just wasn't quite up to it. Could it be Christmas without the mistletoe? Could it be Christmas without the winter snow? No fireplace, no Christmas tree, no decorations, just you and me. Would it be Christmas then? On the first Christmas, there was no mistletoe. On the first Christmas, there was no winter snow. No fireplace, no Christmas tree, no decorations, just the wise men three. And it was Christmas then. The holiday season has changed, but the reason we celebrate remains. It can be Christmas without the mistletoe. It can be Christmas. Without the winter snow No fireplace, no Christmas tree No decorations, just you and me It can be Christmas then For Christmas we
good tidings. Well, the following day it was Christmas Eve. Oh, and we were really busy. Rest period. Do take a rest. I've decided to give you a Christmas bonus. Four whole shillings. Here, a shilling for you, girl. Mm, well, I hope it doesn't bankrupt the old skin flint. Actually, I must confess to an ulterior motive. <laughs> This is a lonely old place for me, and I finally decided that what I need is a wife. A wife, sir? You? And why not? I cut a splendid figure. Paul, oh. you say something? Uh, no, sir. Mm. Well, to get to the point, I'm happy to inform you that I've decided that the girl I would most like to so honor is none other than your own dear, lucky Bertha. What? No, we could be wed tomorrow. It's Christmas, a holiday. That way we wouldn't lose a day's work. <laughs> oh, sir. No, you don't have to make up your mind right away. Take your time. Think it over. Well, I'll give you uh, an hour and 15 minutes. Meanwhile, back to work. Oh, Father, I'm, I'm so very honored. But, but, my dear, you're just a child. Father, I haven't been a child for a long time. You've just got to accept the fact that I am a big, grown-up girl now. Lullabies and fairy tales Pinafores, piano scales Satin bows and cheeks of rose That was yesterday Who's that? The old gentleman? I have happy news, sir. And I've something to tell you. I've waited too long. <laughs> no, no, no. Let me tell my news first. For it is bursting inside of me. The most wonderful man in the whole world has asked me to be his wife. Indeed. I offer you then my heartiest congratulations. <laughs> they don't sound very hearty. And now... What had you to tell me? Well, I, uh, that is... Uh... Oh, blast all this telling one another. We've got no time for it. This is an emergency. Why, Cricket, what a thing to say. Excuse me. What's wrong with the old fellow? <laughs> Never mind him. Think of her. What can I do? Have I deceived her all this time, but to break her heart at last? Father, I've made up my mind. When Mr. Tackleton returns, I shall tell him that I accept his proposal. See, I was determined that Bertha would never get a chance to say yes. So, I called together some of me mates. Well, right on the dot, he arrives. Do come and sit beside me, Mr. Tackleton. I've made tea. I shall. 
No, I shall, my pretty little lady. One lump or two? Uh, two. Oh, yes, two, my pretty. Two, he says. Coming up, matey. Oh, oh. oh is anything wrong? Uh, no. And now, my dear, we come to the reason for my presence here. <laughs> That's what you think, chum. Pepper. And have you made up your pretty little mind? <laughs> well, to tell the truth, kind sir. Yes. <laughs> oh! Oh, what was that? Never mind. Now, uh... Well, well what on oh, earth? Excuse me, my pretty little... It was that cricket made a fool of me. Uriah, get rid of him once and for all. And this time, no slip-ups. Get professional help so you won't bungle the job. I want that cricket... Eliminated. <laughs> All right, quiet. Mom's gonna say. Ah, shut up. Diamond spurs and ocean trips. They don't go with toughens tips. Don't feed me champagne talk when we're eating fish and chips. Half of pints and smoky kips. We're never meant to touch my lips. Don't speak those platinum words when we're eating fish and chips. Can't you get out of the habit of saying mean when you mean rabbit? Of saying sable when you can't afford rabbit? Prepare to love you and to love my fish and chips. Ah, hello, Strangler Slink. I've got a proper evil proposition to put to you. Ah. What's the job this time, Uriah Cole? We eliminate an annoying cricket. Uh, a cricket? <laughs> ah, not that easy. He's a clever one, he is, but he must be put away. Ah. I have a better idea. We'll capture him. I know a captain who pays well for captured crickets, sells them in China for good luck, he says. <laughs> <laughs> Now, where's our pay? I've got your payoff right here, lad. Oh, I hitched up with a lovely crew, I can tell you. There I was, setting sail for China on Christmas Eve, leaving poor Bertha in the hands of that... <coughs> coup. What'll my family do without their lucky cricket on the hearth? Hi. You'll fetch a pretty price, you will. A bolt of silk or a crate of tea. Uh, <clears throat> what be the matter with ye? Oh, deader than a doornail he be. Dead cricket's no good to me. My plan worked perfect like. Yeah, I only overlooked one thing. Crickets can't swim. Uh, yeah, but luck was with me. But another thing I forgot was crickets float. 
Now, I know you're not going to believe how I got back to land, but this is the way it happened. Look, so help me. It was just before midnight when I got back. Home at last. Cool. A wedding dress. She's going to go through with it. Cool. It's midnight. Midnight on Christmas Eve. The one hour in the year when magical things is supposed to happen. Oh, look, maybe this bloke's still in luck. Hello, hello. Here yeah, now. Here now, what's up? Blimey! The toy! It's coming to life! Dearie, humans must never see toys come to life. Those are the rules. Oh, here now. Here now. Oh, look, look, save your worries. Look, I'm no human. I'm a... <coughs> Blimey, no! I am a cricket. Whew. Crickets don't count. And let me be the first to say that I am happy to have you on my side. Aww. Well, you're all going to help stop poor Bertha from marrying that crow-loving skinflin, aren't you? We'd do anything for Caleb and Bertha. If it wasn't for them, we'd be ugly. Mm. <laughs> hush, hush. Oh, but we haven't much time. In a moment, we'll have to go to sleep again. <laughs> it's the rules. The rules. The rules. The rules. Yeah, you can't break the rules, so let's get cracking. Uh, any ideas? Conference! All right, break it up, break it up! Enough talk. Let's have a little action. Righto! Follow me, lads! <laughs> Why are we bothering with that old geezer? Blimey! Oh, well, he's coming apart. Coo! That is not an old man. That's... Edward Belton. Oh, but it couldn't be. <coughs> you were lost at sea, you... Oh, kindly allow me to explain. You see, Edward Belton didn't drown when his ship went down. He built himself a raft and sailed to a beautiful, uncharted island. And he was there. Oh, please, sir... And he was there two years before a whaler found him and brought him back to England. But then why the disguise? Well, uh-oh, our time is up. Now what's the matter with you toy blokes? I ask a simple question, I expect a simple answer. My beard, my wig. Cricket Crockett's on to you. Now speak up. The whole story. Well, I may as well tell you. I was shipwrecked, you see. Well, I know all that. The raft and the island and the whaler. What I don't understand is uh, the whiskers and the wheeze. I came directly to her, but then I saw she'd gone blind. And I realized it was my fault. I couldn't just step back into her life after what I'd done to her. Oh, come on now. She needs you more than she needs six new eyes. That's what I hoped. But I had to be sure, you see, and so I adopted the disguise. This way I could be near her without anyone knowing. Blimey! Oh, there were a thousand times I was on the verge of telling her, but something always interrupted. And yesterday, 
I made up my mind. You remember, I came in to tell her, only to see her radiant face. Radiant because the most wonderful man in the world had asked her to be his wife. Those were her very words. Oh, you, 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 you nincompoop! Paying any attention to the words of a gushing female. Oh, no. I could tell she meant it. And he has so much more to offer her. I'm still poor and... Poor? Oh, why, she wouldn't trade the Bank of England for you. I wish I could believe that, Cricket. I came back tonight for one last look at her. I... I guess I just fell asleep watching her. Uh, you're asleep all right. Asleep all over. Who oh, are you romantic, sentimental ninny? She don't love nobody else but you. If I could only believe that. Bertha, love. Bertha? Yeah, wake up now. Ow. Gentle. Come on, gentle. It's only me. Oh. Oh. Oh, Cricket. You're back. You're safe. Cricket? Cricket? Oh. Oh? Darling. Am I dreaming? I... Oh, Edward. Edward. Oh, Edward, you're alive. You're alive, Edward. Oh, you're alive. Edward, do you know about me? I'm... As it should Through my eyes And one day You'll be happy That you found the way That you saw Never was such a Christmas morning. Everybody happier than larks, all except uh... there. I was waiting at the church. What's this? What's this? What's going on here anyway? This just isn't fair. After all I've done for you. <laughs> oh, Mr. Tackleton, Mr. Tackleton, I'm so terribly sorry. But you see, my heart belongs to Edward. It always has. Nobody loves me. But we all love you. And there will always be a place in my heart for a fine and kind and noble and handsome gentleman such as you. Fine, kind, noble, and, and handsome. <laughs> but of course. Dear me, I feel good all over. Nobody ever said such nice things to me before. <laughs> I feel as light as a lark, happy as a hummingbird. Why? Why? I wonder why. Maybe because it's Christmas. It really is Christmas. But of course. <laughs> of course, Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Oh, Cricket, you're the luckiest thing that ever happened to anyone. Cricket on the heart, take that horseshoe off your door. With a cricket on the heart, you can leave that lucky penny sitting on the floor. Well, that's my story. Ended happy. <laughs>
did. Here's hoping all your stories end happy too. May you all have good health, good cheer, and a good Merry Christmas. Oh, and above all, may you never, never be without a cricket on your heart. Cricket on the heart, see that mistletoe above. With a cricket on the heart, cut it down, you'll still be lucky. Cricket on the heart. I thoroughly enjoyed playing Old Man Plummer, and my daughter Bertha in the play was played by my real life daughter, Marlo Thomas, and her boyfriend. Edward Benton was Ed Ames, and the singing cat was delightfully played by Miss Abby Lane, and gruff old Tackleton, that fine actor and my dear friend Hans Conried. And our wonderful narrator, the lucky Cricket Crockett, was marvelous actor Roddy McDowell. And in the song, The First Christmas, there are the lines, the holiday season has changed, but the reason we celebrate remains. Yes, that reason hasn't changed since the very first day when the wise men presented their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And on that subject, there's a lovely poem by the author Edmund Cook that sums it up pretty well. Mr. Cook wrote, "'Tis not the weight of jewel or plate, or the fondle of silk or fur, tis the spirit in which the gift is rich, as the gifts of the wise men were. And we are not told whose gift was gold. Or whose was the gift of myrrh? No fireplace, no Christmas tree, no decorations, just you and me. It can be Christmas then, for Christmas.